Hi everyone, it's Linton Hats. Long time no see in front of the camera, actually. <laughs> um, I thought of doing the um, um, tarot, tube, uh, tarot tube tag, and if you hear this, here's a fly, a annoying fly at the moment, uh, circling around and uh, tries to ruin this video. <laughs> Uh, but I will do it anyway. So I'm uh, doing the uh, tarot tube tag by, I guess it, the first one who did it was, or who initiated it was Inspired Alien. And I was some kind of tag by my, my tarot three by Daniela. And so I thought, okay, I might join and I want to do this and um, do it in front of the camera for a change. <laughs> Actually, always have some problems with the lighting here at the moment, always too harsh or so. So let's start with the with the tag and I have them written down the questions, 11 questions. Yeah. Um, what made you start YouTubing? Well, I don't know. Um, when did I start? I guess four years ago, three years ago, four years. I'm not quite sure at the moment. I should have looked it up. Um, um, I started it not necessarily because of tarot. Um, but because of my studies, uh, my um, season of the seeker studies, elemental balancing, this was about, um, and it was um, initiated by Annie or Annika Greystone from the Mirth and Reverence channel. Uh, some of you out there, some of you witches out there will know her quite, uh, quite a, yeah, legend, could you say? Uh, a wonderful lady here on on YouTube for so many years and so many inspiring videos, especially for young witches or for those who just started uh, on their path. And um, I was lucky enough to participate in her year in a day course, which turned out to be a bit more than year in a, in a day. I guess it was two years or so, but this had more to do with myself and also with uh, other stuff. But it was wonderful experience and. Um, it was um, a study course or a workshop, not a workshop, um, a course um, where you study together with other women from all over the world. And there was also a group, not a Facebook, but um, a Yahoo group it was. And there we were all ex exchanging our uh, thoughts about exercises, about uh, each session and so on and so forth, our lives. and. That's the reason I started YouTubing, because I wanted to show my little part of the world to my sisters from all over the world. And um, this eventually became more tarot related, tarot, but still spiritual related um, to some degree. And um, it was um, it was melting into this tarot uh, thing. Uh, which had to do also with my studies because also my, my teacher was into tarot and um, I got interested and started to exploring other channels like Kelly and Maddox channel and also because she was a witch and so on and so forth. But that was the main reason I started um, I started tarot YouTubing um, or should I say YouTubing at all. Um, what is the tarot scene like in your area? Which tarot scene? Uh, well, no, there isn't a tarot scene here. And we had, to be honest, we had a wonderful witchy shop up until, I try to remember, up until almost, not almost, one and a half a year ago, I guess. We had a gorgeous little uh, uh, tarot shop called Beltane. And it also had uh, a second title, so witchy shop or witches shop. And I guess that was the one, uh, the thing that made a lot of people uh, uncomfortable or so. The problem, the main problem was the area in which this shop was, um, was uh, uh, or this shop settled down. It was not necessarily an area where you would find uh, metaphysical shops at all or something like that. Maybe the rents were there more affordable, but um, the lady who ran or who was running the shop was a witch and she was also a tarot reader and she offered also tarot readings. She, I guess she was more, more what I would say, a more a kind of traditional tarot reader. So more into this future telling, fortune telling thing. Um, I would say... Um, 
but still it was a wonderful little shop and you got some tarot decks there mostly from low scarbeel but also some of the few german decks you was was able to get there so like the wildwood for instance which is also published in german language um, but this shop had to close down uh, i knew that um that um, tarot readings were uh, were running quite well there um, but um, the business itself was not running well so um, there were some problems with the people who were living there so one incident uh, one 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 incident that happened there that someone came in and just cursed her to worship the devil and that was not necessarily a christian but it was um, the area where she was uh, settled down was a um, Muslim area and th those um, people there were also not very fond of that but this could have happened also in other more traditional areas here maybe I don't know how much how many traditional more traditional areas or not so much open-minded areas here are in, in, in my city but there are certainly other areas and other city parts where you could could easily open up um, a metaphysical store so um Tarot isn't really happening here. Sometimes I think tarot isn't really so much a thing in Germany at all. At least when you see or when you watch the um, um, the, the 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 publisher landscape, the, the tarot publisher landscape, we have the usual suspects that you can get. Um, I'm quite stunned always how many German translated tarot decks you were able to get up until between 2000, 2000 and 2010. So sometimes I come across or stumble across old decks that are not necessarily or no, not uh, that aren't in print anymore. So, <laughs> and um, yeah, this is not, it is sometimes really hard and, um, but uh, I guess something is happening here. I visited a couple, two months ago, almost two months ago, not miss it, no, almost two months ago, I visited my uh, first um, tarot um, convention here in Germany, the, which was the second one that took place here. It was very small, only at the beginning, but also very cozy and very open-hearted and so on. And something is happening here and something will grow, I'm quite sure of. Um, but at the moment here in my area, my neighborhood or so on well tarot isn't a thing just let me say it. tarot isn't a thing and um, when people hear tarot they always say oh you predict the future thing and uh, you always have to say no not necessarily this is only about the future maybe it'll start that way and so on and so forth so no scene at all um well um yeah so that was question number two. And now question number three would be will be quite a um, tricky one. Name an overrated and an underrated deck. So all I can say is decks that I will answer this like that. Um, decks that I underrated or overrated, actually. So decks that I thought would be awesome and decks that I initially thought would never be one that I would get or something like that. And um, I have to say decks that really um, were underrated or running under my radar were decks with an art style that was, um, and this is really tricky to, um, to come up with a, with a fitting term, um, decks that aren't necessarily pretty. So uh, where you immediately saying oh how cute oh my gosh this art is so oh uh, wow 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 this kind of wow, wow 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 art style and i had to learn that you will find deep and really intense meanings in more simple art styles uh than sometimes in a more um yeah how to how to put it um in a deck that is maybe more uh, more elaborative art style kind of thing. So where you think, oh my gosh, this is something is so beyond everything. This is a new whatever master of art or something. Um, no, it is sometimes the simple things. And you see it here behind me, maybe picking up and it's the mother piece. 
and I wasn't aware um, at first I wasn't aware that this deck was uh, existing up until some month ago um, and I was quite I was quite uh, taken by surprise this is really at first I would say this is not the art style that calls to me whoop, calls to me very uh, much at first so because it has really it's, it's very simple and um, no shadings and so on but still there is a power behind those images that um, and behind the work that Vicky Noble and uh, Karen Vogel were doing in in back in those days when they created that deck and it is simply it is simply whoops simply stunning um, how how much uh, this deck is um, how much is this deck is really becoming one of my my top tens or top whatever uh, or very high in my rank and um, this is really some sometimes I can't really grasp it but I have with this deck I got really the feeling when I watch or when I see a deck that is from the art factor itself incredible skillful incredible beautiful and so on sometimes and i will won't name any decks uh, with that sometimes you're you're you when you watch that card you still or you're 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 leaving you you'll be left outside so to put you can't get an entrance all you have this is an, an admiration or an an, an an awe for this wonderful art style and so on but you can't get beyond this beautiful service surface if that makes sense at all but this is really something that came to my mind when i watched decks why i thought oh this is a deck i must have this is so beautiful but sometimes these decks left me empty for some degree not everyone is the same i know and uh, other people will find uh, similar decks uh, incredible meaning, uh, meaningful and will find maybe the mother piece uh, a no-go but still I found that these decks are sometimes uh, or were under my radar and were underrated like for instance also the the Dark Goddess Tarot and um, which has also a very simple or simplistic style and not much uh, in-depth shadings or so on but it's everything is there what you need and even more but it's very clear it's very um you you get to the point it cuts through and so on it's the same like with the um it's this one here and this wonderful reddish back here and of course it is um the terror of the crone and this is also it is unusual at first i would say oh my i'm not sure about that at for, first but then when you really open your heart to these to these uh, images and so on you get really intense readings and i had um a couple of days ago i had a new moon reading or a dark moon reading with it and oh my gosh it brought me to it brought me to tears it really brought me to tears and it moved something so deep i wasn't aware that this was have could happen with an art style like that i always thought back, uh, uh, i have to have uh, art styles that always match my my taste my kind of taste but this brought me to a more uh, that i appreciate simplistic art style much more than than ever before so like that overrated deck uh like i said sometimes decks that are so at first really beautiful but leave you cold i had that with the um which i don't have anymore i traded it with the terror of muha i love muha's art style and i love also the this, this art nouveau style love it still for some reason i can't really this is the only explanation i can give for some reason it had to do with um with being almost too beautiful if that makes sense um I know I also have other decks which are highly beautiful and still there is something uh, I can get into but some decks are, have a level of beauty that 
leaves me outside of the door of the door where behind I would find level deep levels of meaning sometimes this happens so yeah overrated underrated so that that's my answer to that um tarot in one word ally I think I would say ally or companion maybe or perhaps um I guess two of spirit was the the was uh, the one who said also friend so I would say really ally um constant companion um on everyday matters but still um one that where you you can get your um yeah some wisdom from it but af uh, but uh, uh, often also have uh, have you have to step away from it um because you have to find your own level of um uh, grasping a topic if that makes sense um i had that uh back um back at the end of last year where i wasn't um where i were pulling cards but still i of course the message repeated and repeated and repeated itself and uh sometimes you have when that happens sometimes you have to step away retreat into uh, into silence and into solitude and then you find a way to um finally uh, be able to um follow that message if uh, if that uh, makes any sense at all this is something um i really uh, i really learned that sometimes you have to uh, leave the cards behind still maybe keep the 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 messages of the the card in your head but let them sink in and then let silence do their work Uh, do the rest of the work to be honest so this is really when i was able to do things that the cards were telling me like ages <laughs> it's it's like i felt it was they, they were saying that like ages so um it was really uh back then i read the cards and uh, or read the cards and i thought oh yeah okay this is what i have to do but still i weren't able to do it But then when I left the cards aside and um, went outside, uh, went on that retreat, I was uh, end of the year last year. Um, it was all, everything was much clearer then. And um, yeah, and I was able to, uh, to do the things that um, were, yeah, the core uh, of the card meanings or the core of the cards uh, uh, or the core that the cards were telling me so um i'm rambling here so that's uh, my one word it's an ally it's an ally and it's an it's a companion in uh the everyday life um but sometimes you have to uh find after that you have to find your own way and not pulling cards and cards and cards and uh getting the the same message in a kind of little bit different ways but or little variations um over and over again when that happens you have to um have to leave the cards aside and find uh the way uh, a way how to uh fulfill or how to follow their guidelines so to speak um oh name three name three uh, uh tarot channels okay I made a list and it's of course there are more of course because she mentioned me and uh, I will of course mention her my tarot three and she uh, yeah she is relatively new in, uh, uh, in the tarot, uh, tarot tube community you could say <laughs> and um, yeah also uh, she's also on, on, on Instagram a bit longer I guess of course uh, from the followers uh, i i've picked up on on uh, a number of followers uh, i saw on uh, instagram but she is really on the go she's really on the go she has a gorgeous uh, blog she started recently and um has really great knowledge about uh, the dark goddess i was uh, listening to her um to um yeah um How do you call Vortrag in, in English? Uh, um, so she was uh, she was referring. I don't know. She was um, telling uh, a bit about the Dark Goddess on the um, 
on the tarot uh, convention uh, or the tarot con and um this was really in depth and there were a lot of insights and of course they made me do this uh made me do wanting the the dark goddess even more and um she also has a dark goddess tarot or dark goddess series here on youtube i really check that out it's really amazing and um yeah so this is one channel and the another one i will say a really baby channel to be honest and i guess she just started maybe eight weeks ago or so i'm not quite sure um and this is Anielle reed tarot she only has 15 subscribers or so and she only has some i guess four or five videos up but she she does really uh wonderful little beautiful mini review videos that are beautifully edited and with a little bit music on and so uh, on and so forth she's also on instagram i'm not sure if she's called that the same i guess she is um and she's all also very into the community and asking which kind of review someone want to uh, see from which deck she always offers choices and so on so really a wonderful beautiful little challenge uh, uh where i look forward to see more um a third one now i have to see which one there are of course a lot more um i would say uh lotus intuitive um because she was the one I stumbled across uh, when I searched for a, a review video or a walkthrough video of the women's runes um, by Bridget's Grove or so. I guess more Bridget's Grove it was. And um, she was uh, walking through the runes and she was also telling more about the guidebook. I still have to fetch the guidebook. <laughs> and I made my own runes and... Um, which were encouraged in that uh, guidebook I, I heard and was quite uh, quite um, into that. And she really does also quite beautiful little, um, not necessarily little, but uh, wonderful reviews and so on and so forth. So, so um, also very um, quite new, but um, still she is, uh, yeah, she needs more. She needs more followers. <laughs> She's also on um, on Instagram, and I guess she's also called Lotus Intuitives there. Of course, there are other other uh, channels. I also have some more, but um, yeah, of course, I will. I guess I will uh, at some point uh, make a video where I make some kind of shout outs with uh, more smaller uh, tarot um, tarot channels. Um, mm -mm -mm. Um, number six, your favorite type of videos on YouTube. Uh, so favorite type of tarot videos or, uh, yeah, I guess tarot videos. Um, often walkthroughs. Um, it was like that, often walkthroughs. At the moment, I'm avoiding them to some degree because um, they are all, always, these walkthroughs, uh, walkthroughs are always... Um, enable us to be honest uh, and I try to step away from that so I can concentrate more on other stuff and also on the decks I have uh, that's also the reason why I'm sometimes not necessarily um, always I was quite into that uh, quite some time ago but at the moment uh, I'm avoiding it that for that reason too so so, so live chats or also uh, long uh, involving long conversations on on facebook groups and so on and so forth about uh, certain decks especially when certain hypes are going around i try to ah, no i don't want to see it please <laughs> leave my poor wallet alone <laughs> and this is a kind of avoiding so it doesn't have to do with uh, the people or something but i um yeah i try to these are triggers and I try to avoid these triggers at the moment so addict in me uh, in, in myself the, the addict can't uh, take over <laughs> or win uh, win me over um, so mostly it was walkthroughs and um, sometimes still um, um, 
but uh, sometimes I also like uh, videos where they talk about decks that I already have, <laughs> so to deepen my 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 appreciation for them to 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 some degree. Also love to listen to videos that talk about some cards in depth and some uh, uh, creative stuff you can do with your with your cards, like um, uh, like maybe spells or magical stuff or so on or maybe uh, um, tarot cards for storytelling and so on so this is really also something i really like and um, another one that i also liked uh, uh something which are very quick by one channel it was uh was what was dark star tarot uh, and she does often does walk th uh, walkthroughs which are silent and um, I like that They're quite quick and you can get an overview of a, uh, of a deck and that's um, also quite helpful sometimes. But at the moment, most mostly I search for stuff, uh, what you can do with cards uh, and um, don't necessarily watch every walkthrough that is up. Um, another one. Uh, number seven, what would you A, think B, uh, say and see do if tarot didn't suddenly exist so what would i think maybe nothing because uh tarot wouldn't exist and i wouldn't know it <laughs> that it ever existed maybe and what i s would say maybe also nothing but um what i would do or suddenly do if this would be taken from me maybe search other ways to fulfill that loss to be honest um, maybe getting more into even more into uh, uh, earth-based spirituality or something, finding some kind of um, um, yeah answers in the in nature, which I also do now, but maybe even more. And I would also uh, maybe find other ways of uh, yeah um, getting yeah my how to call it my my so my appetite is getting uh, still or something um um uh, for 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 pictures for images because i'm a picture nerd i love picture books i collect photos and so on and so forth uh and i love when they come together with stories and so maybe i would find a substitute for that uh i have to f have to be a bit quicker because after 30 minutes my camera will die uh voila, bop, bop. Um, number eight do you use tarot apps yes uh, for quite a while I guess since I have that smartphone um, mostly I did it for a reason to uh, delve into uh, the guidebook and also take a look at the cards if I am comfortable with the cards or so on and so forth but mostly like a lot of us I yearn for a physical copy when I like that app um, but uh, recently I started, when I was waiting on my, for my Dark Goddess Tarot, I purchased the app and I also used it for daily readings, but no, only for one card uh, draw uh, and it was okay. It was working, but still the, uh, the, physical, <laughs> the physical aspect uh, of shuffling and of dealing with the cards, of uh, smelling them and so on, this is really important to me. So I use them, but uh, not like an, a physical app. It's more like a testing out a tarot deck or so. Um, favorite thing about the tarot community? Yeah, this kind of connection you get with people from all over the world who are uh, nerds of tarot, yeah? So um, talking about that, which is great because, like I said, here's no... At, for the moment, no existing uh, community, especially here in my area. So this is really great. And I, I like that so many different people are into tarot and um, uh, that there are friendships about, yeah, friendships came out of that uh, because of that. And um, it, the world really felt smaller and uh, it became less some kind of a happy place for uh, for crazy tarot people like myself, and um, this is really I something I really I like, and um, the playfulness about the community I really also adore. So uh, the the community factor itself, so I could say uh, in in uh, some words, in a couple of words. Uh, 
uh, number 10 tarot video ideas uh tarot video ideas uh for my, for myself or which are the ideas i would love to see um uh i really like that uh, when um when you see what you can do creatively with the cards itself uh a bit like the create uh, the the tarot activity book uh something like that i really like uh when you uh, when you find creative ways to deal with uh, not to deal but to to play with the cards or um, um or for, for creative writing or so on i really like uh, for instance i really like to write haikus for um, three card spreads so using three cards and creating a haiku or should i say in a haiku inspired poem and this is really something i really like um, um maybe also how to connect cards with your with your witchiness with your craft or so on and so forth like i said with spells or so uh ideas for myself i guess one thing i wanted to do for a while now was a comparison video between the the greenwood and the wild world tarot and uh still it's on my to-do list and my ever long to-do list yeah but uh i'm open for for new ways of seeing tarot except or outside of the usual walkthroughs so um also the the videos that sacred seed is uh doing uh sometimes about uh tarot how she involves uh north mythology into that uh when you go into when you use these things together in correlation i really adore that too um who do you talk uh, tag uh, everyone because i guess everyone has tagged everyone into some degree so who, when you call to do that and when you want to to um to do that tag feel free to do it and uh, uh maybe let me know here in the comments and yeah i wish you all the best and we will see us hopefully very soon and um until then bye bye